Hi people, welcome back to Charlie and me, our camping vlog. Thank you for the comments on the 12 volt video that we did last week. It's just a bit of an info video. We did a Q&A video a couple of weeks back and a few people were asking us, could we just touch base on the electrics in the van, both the 12 volts and the 220 volt electrics. So we did the 12 volts in the last video and today's video is going to be the 220 volt electrics, which is the mains electric shoreline hookup when you go onto a campsite. Couple of things about this, there's very little runs on your van on 220 volts. If you have air confitted like we do up in the back there, that only runs on 220 volts. Your fridge runs on gas, 220 and 12 volt. 12 volt while you're driving, 220 while you're plugged in and gas if you're what's known as wild camping. And then after that, there's in this van, we have a 220 volt socket in the TV press over the kitchen area and in the bathroom. And that's it. Now, I fitted a twin socket over the dinette, and I'll show you that later. But most vans don't have a lot of 220 volt sockets. So here's what we're going to do. This is how we do it, okay? Every year, we do quite a lot of camping. Now, if you don't do much camping, some of this won't really matter to you. But we do quite a lot of camping. So at the beginning of the year, I check our mains leads. Just check the terminals on them. We have two leads. One blue one, which I think is 10 meters. And I must have that 10 years. I've swapped that every time I buy a camper van, I take out the lead that comes with the van and I keep this one. And then I think it was three or four years ago, Deirdre bought a 20 meter one in Aldi. So we carry that as well. So I'm going to show you, first thing I do at the beginning of the season is check both ends. Just check the terminals on both ends of your lead. And I would do it again, maybe halfway through the season. Again, it gets a lot of hacking on a rainy day. You'll be rushing and unplugging on the leads and you could pull terminals out. And seven times out of 10, when you plug in and nothing happens, if it's not the trip on the campsite, it could be the lead. So first thing I'm going to show you now is how I check my lead. And then I'm going to walk you through the electrics on the camper van. So let's go over on the bench. I have a lead and we're just going to show you how I just check the terminals. You don't have to be an electrician to do this. Now, I am an electrician as it happens, but you don't have to be an electrician. This is just like changing the plug in the house, except for you're checking the lead belong to your camper van. So some of these have where you need to get a Phillips head screwdriver, put it in there to release the plug. This one is actually a twist mechanism. So you loosen off the cable and when you push it up, the plug comes out like this. Now I notice here, and this is my first time to check this one, our earth cable is broken. Can you see that? I'll actually show it to this camera. The earth cable, so that earth cable has not been connected. So at this point, I need a terminal screwdriver. This is two screws, open them up. Clean out the bit of cable. While I'm here, I'm just going to check my neutral terminal. It's tight. Check my live. It took one twist and I get a snips. Oh, where my snips is actually. We'll strip the end of the cable and push the air again, just checking that those terminals are loosened off enough. So it pays to check your cables on a regular basis. Now, this would have worked, but I would have had no earth. That's the only thing. Um, and earth is a good thing. So I'm going to put this earth in here, connect these terminals back in, and put this plug back together. Back in a second. So both ends checked. Um, both ends tightened up. Make sure that the cables are secured. Now, I've said this on podcast, so put the tools back when you're finished. I keep my cable strapped with a bicycle hook. It's, it's, you know, you get a strap to hold your foot onto a pedal. And the reason I do that is when I plug in my van, I tie this to the steering wheel and that way then you won't drive off and be connected. As soon as you sit in the van, you'll see this is still strapped to your steering wheel and you go, oh my God, I haven't unplugged my electric lead. So that's a good thing to do, a strap or a piece of twine to keep your lead tidy and strap it to your steering wheel so you won't drive off. Right, let's go to the electrics 
I'm not going to use this lead. I've got one over here because I'm in the yard and I'm constantly plugged in. But let's go over to the side of the van and see what happens next. So on the side of motorhomes, camper vans, this is where you will find your power point. Very, very simple. Lift up the cover, put it in. What I love about this van is when I'm plugging in, I can look in the window here and see that the red light has come on over the door. So I know I'm now connected to the 220 volt power. So I mentioned in the 12 volt video that we have, I'll just open my TV press and I'll just turn this camera around. We have a 220 volt socket in there, which also has uh, a 12 volt socket. We have a 220 volt socket just there, which is in the kitchen. And we have a 220 volt socket in there. Handy for a shaver or whatever. They are the only 220 volt power points in this van. So they come standard, one in the bathroom, one in the kitchen, and one in the TV press. I found that a bit annoying because we'd be doing a lot of video editing on dinette. So I ran, and again, I'll turn the camera. I ran a, a let me turn the camera. Again, let me get a bit of light. So we have that 220 volt there, and I put in a four-way plug board. From that plug board, if you see the plug top over there, I have it going up there with my 12 volt supply through the press and down to a twin socket in the dinette. Because this is where I edit all of our videos. So I now have a twin socket there. It's bulky, it's ugly, but it's hidden behind the curtain. And at least I have a power point there. As you see, there's a phone charger. The electric fire can get plugged in there. The laptop can get plugged in there. And it's just a four-way plug board in there and then I ran a lead down to there. When I'm plugged into the mains, you heard me say outside look in the window, that's my 12 volt power there, and that's my main. So once that light is on, I have 220 volt power coming into the van. And all that does, apart from powering the sockets and my fridge when it's on 220 volt, is power a charger to keep your leisure battery charged. So you get to site, you plug in your lead, your light comes on there to let you know that you've got power. Or maybe the light doesn't come on. If the light doesn't come on, go to where you're plugged in on site. Most of the campsites have a little electric trip there. Flick up the trip. If it's down, your power will come on. Some of the campsites only have a power socket on the pole. You may have to go to reception and they may have to check your pitch number in their fuse board and they'll flick up the trip. So if the trip is okay, you know your lead is okay, and that light doesn't come on, there's a problem. Check the fuse board in your camper van. <gasps> there's a fuse board in my camper van, I hear some of you say. There is a fuse board, like your domestic home fuse board. In most cases, in caravans, sometimes it's under a dinette. In motorhomes, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's in the wardrobe. Now, we use our wardrobe, as you can see, but in there is a fuse board. If that is tripped down, nothing will work. It's just two 10 amp trips that are tripping or powering, not tripping, powering absolutely everything in here. Now, when I say everything, that's the socket in the bathroom, the socket in the kitchen and your fridge. So if you plug in your laptop and it's not charging, go find your fuse board, flick up that trip if it's down, and that should fix everything. If it doesn't fix everything, you've got to go back to the process of elimination. Check your lead, check the power where you're plugged in. If the power is on where you're plugged in, if your lead is okay, and you trip that up and it stays up, you've got a problem. I don't know what it could be. That's an electrician come have a look. Not an auto electrician. An auto electrician may know if he's works with camper vans. Another thing we power off our 220 is our air conditioning unit, which is oh, there. That only works, the light works on 12 volt, but the air con only works on 220 volt. So that, the fridge and our sockets. The max fan that we have here works on 12 volts. So again, we don't need 220 volt for that. So let's recap. Every year, at least twice at the beginning of the year and during the year, because your cable takes some tugging check the sockets on both ends of your cable. You don't have to be an electrician, 
open it up make sure you have a live and neutral you saw our earth was broken check both ends when that's done if you don't have power in the camper check where you're plugged in also check the van socket because mine has to click before it actually gives power so just check your connections back on the campsite if there isn't a trip there let reception know and they will look at the trip board in their power room after that nothing can really go wrong you've just got that trip unit that is in the wardrobe that's basically it and remember get a bit of string or get a lace or get a little strap to tie up your lead and keep it tidy in the van and put it on your steering wheel when you're plugged in and that way you won't do what chris did once and drive off and stay plugged in i'm aaron from charlie Amir camping vlog hope this video was a little bit helpful to you guys take care <laughs>just a footnote i mentioned on our 12 volt video that we have an inverter fitted an inverter is a great thing to have now there's a couple you can get you can get a pure sine wave inverter which is the best but they're more expensive you can get them from 300 watts up to five kilowatts which will run a house you don't need them that big in the b-ball i fitted a two kilowatt inverter which ran our toaster it'll run a kettle it was a pure sine wave inverter but it was also around 13 or 1400 euro in this one, I have a 300 watt basic inverter. What it does is it's in, and you would have seen it on the 12 volt video, it's connected to my leisure battery. And then in turn, when you turn on the inverter, it gives you 220 volt power. If I plug in my laptop, I'll hear my la laptop crick, crickle or, or squeak a little bit, buzz, because it's not pure sine wave, but it's fine for charging phones. 300 watt doesn't really do much, but if you have a 1200 watt or bigger, you could make toast. Um, I'll put a chart in here which shows the wattage of things. For example, we'll say if it's a, a one kilowatt hairdryer, how many amps that will use. And that's handy as well because most campsites are 10, 16, and very few are 20 amps back at the socket. So if you're on a campsite with 10 amps, you can run a toaster, but you can't run a toaster and a kettle together. So I'll just put it back up here again and I'll stick it up at the end of the video, this little chart. Maybe you could take a screenshot of it and keep a note of it. It's a handy thing to have. It tells you different ratings and different ampage for what things are. Now, I'm going to say goodbye. Take care.